God is good, and with each day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And guess what guys, we got some really good news today. I could literally dance right here in my gamer chair. This is going to be an exciting episode and I hope you sit real tight, grab you some drinky drink and grab you some snacky snack and we're going to have a good time. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Why? Because I'd love to have you, and so the rest of the community. We talk about Pantheon Rise and Fall mainly, but we cover old school MMOs, JRPGs, CRPGs, RPGs, all that kind of thing. And a big shout out to the members of Napalm. Thank you so much. You keep my lights on, you keep me in business, you keep this channel ticking. Thank you so much. And if you would like to become a member of Napalm, please click the join button down below for a list of perks and information. All right, guys, let's get started. I don't want to wait any further. So, Visionary Realms released a producer's letter today, at the time it's recording. It was awesome. Basically, they go through the entire development of the game, right? From the website, 2014, to starting to get some crowdfunding going, to actually start making the game. And they talk about some juicy information, because a lot of people were a little concerned, right? They saw the newest stream, or they played in the pre-op 5 shakeout, and they saw some gray boxing, etc. And they're like, what? I thought we'd be further along than this in six years of development. Well, it turns out, guys, as I pretty much assumed, they had to make some changes, right? We knew they were going to rebuild some zones they said they were going to and while developing what they explain in this newsletter is that during project fair hell what we in the community know as the dark ages of pantheon when they closed the curtains and they went nose to the grinder and started hammering out this game that they actually realized during that time that they were going to continue with the then current implementation practices and the coding that they have which was very much hard-coded or hardwired into the game so basically put that very simply in very simple terms the game up until before project fair so that would have been pre-alphas one through four everything was hardwired like when you press w the character moves forward when this happens then that happens and this affects that because of this and that's just not how you develop an mmo to be honest right it worked to get the game off the ground and to get a lot of the things built and for them to try out a lot of different things and get a lot of systems in place and it doesn't it doesn't mean everything's wasted but what it means is they had to redo that coding right which is a nightmare god bless them but they did it so during that's why project fair hell took so long okay basically that's what they're telling us here it took so long because they changed the coding to be more flexible and more efficient they set up pipelines so they can inject content into the game quicker why? Because they're a small team. They can't possibly waste time when they don't need to. I know it took a while for Project Pharaoh. We all remember how terrible that was, waiting and being like, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? Well, now we understand. They they basically changed the coding. They have new coding now. Um, so now it's a lot better. They're in a much better place and they're able to do what they need to do. And development can continue at a much faster pace now because of that. And it's over, by the way, before people start saying, well, now the development is in development hell. It will take forever. Guess what, guys? That time has already passed. They've already done the new coding. So, beginning now in pre-alpha 5, which, by the way, big news about pre-alpha 5, big news about alpha 2. Hang in there with me, guys. Well, this is a crazy ride. So, pre-alpha 5, they want you to know, all right? First of all, pre-alpha 5 is going to be, by the end of it, a full progression from level 1 to level 50. Tons of zones will be added over time. We'll begin to see great, some of the gray boxing turn into fully fleshed out, etc. as it's injected through the pipelines that they built and as it's optimized because optimization is a huge deal for this game. You hear I'm talking about all the time. How the game is going to feel, how smooth it is, how it runs, etc. So they need to optimize it really well. And part of this coding was so that they could get that optimization on point. But in any case, there will this will go through phases, right? Like pre-alpha 5 is pre-alpha 5. It's going to go through phases. They actually said they're no longer going to actually use the terms pre-alpha 5 proper. It causes confusion and... They just don't want to use that term anymore. Just don't expect that all of pre-alpha 5 will be available immediately, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to come out over time. But my most exciting read from this, actually, is this line here. I'm going to read it directly. The two shakeout sessions are now behind us and helped identify several key issues we needed to address on the account, login, server level, and in some of the systems. And now we are ready to begin pre-alpha 5. 
This is the arc of the Pantheon Legacy thus far. The end of Pre-Alpha 5 is where it all comes together in a playable game. It is the part where Rocky stops at Father Carmine's to get a blessing on his way to the fight. Pre-Alpha 5 is a collaboration between the dev team and the community. The dev team has the advantage of rapid iteration to help us get to Alpha quicker because of the changes they made to coding. And the testing community can help get us to Alpha by testing productively. It's a multi-session phase. So each of the phases will have new features and or content to be tested. New classes added, more zones added, updated client, updated pipelines. Warning, development during Pre-Alpha 5 is going to be more rapid than it has in the past because they've cleared up that coding so much. So there's going to be substantial differences between the builds. For example, the ShakeOut had two available playable classes. The next session will have four and include several new systems. So you can expect that kind of progression as we go forward. And zones will be added over the sessions as well. So by the end of Pre-Alpha 5, you can expect to see between level 1 to level 50, max level, Pantheon experience. But in the beginning, there are going to be shorter sessions, two to three hours or so. And there is a new pre-alpha session announced. It's actually next week, Wednesday, October 21st, and Thursday, October 22nd. And you can grab those time slots. They have the 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. They have the 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And they have the 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Those are all Pacific time. You should get an email confirming the testing slot and realms are assigned to. And if you want to change your preferred slot and realm, uh, then you need to open a support ticket. Now, once again, a week's notice may be difficult to plan around, obviously. I know for me it is, and uh, I don't know how that's going to go. I'm going to try to get a later time, and hopefully I can do it. But in any case, there's plenty of sessions coming, guys, and they will keep the schedule updated as early as they possibly can. Just keep in mind it's a small team, right? Things come up. They realize they're ready sooner than they originally thought, and they're like, okay, well, we need, we need now we need a session in order to test XYZ. So we need to get as many people as, in as we can as soon as possible so it doesn't slow down development. So it is what it is, guys. But as we get further, things will get more smoothed out and we'll get more time to play in longer sessions and then we get that full progression from level 1 to 50. Now, here's the exciting part. They talk about Alpha. I'm going to read this exactly. Here's what they say. Now on to Alpha. We do not have these dates yet as there are a lot of systems and content to test in Pre-Alpha 5 and Pre-Alpha 5 will last as long as it takes. We certainly are not going to spend years in Pre-Alpha 5, but we will spend the time we need to get the game in a state where it is playable, enjoyable game that covers a full progression path from level 1 to 50. We are actively taking steps to improve our communication, so please know that when they are nearing the completion of Pre-Alpha 5, they will make it abundantly clear. In the meantime, even if you are not a pre-alpha tester, they will be sharing the progress with you routinely. And then, of course, they go on to thank us and, and how ex crazy excited they are, etc. And, guys, I'm crazy excited. I don't know about you, but this is awesome news. And, and you know what? It's really nice to get the clarification that, you know, Project Fairhill took a little longer, but they did more than just make that zone and the assets and the graphics and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, they did that as well, obviously. But... They cleared up a major issue that was causing them problems internally with the development of the game, which was all the hard wiring, coding. And they cleared all that up and got a nice, clean, efficient coding. And if you remember, they hired that programmer guy. Was it Jason? I, I, I'm not sure on that. Not 100%. But they hired that new programmer and he came in and I guarantee you that sounds like that's about the time. He probably swiped in there, cleaned it up, re or realized there was a problem and they started rebuilding the code and now we got this beautiful new client that we have now. Now the clients will change in the future too. That's just the way development works, right? Clients will get better. They'll add new pipelines. They'll add more things and they'll have to update the client. I mean, that will never end. Even after the game is out, we'll have new clients post-launch, right? So no need to for concern here or anything. This is really great news and I'm super excited about it. We're on the clearest path to the launch of Pantheon we have ever been in and I'm super excited about it. Guys, I will have a link to the producer's letter in the description down below. It's a wonderful read. It goes through the entire development history in a really concise, clear-cut way. It fills in a lot of blanks that maybe we had before and all that kind of thing. So 
check it out if you want to. I'll be covering more as we get closer uh, to alpha and, and pre-alpha and anything I'm allowed to talk about that doesn't break NDA, of course I will. And I have a, a, another video coming out that was actually already developing about visionary rounds and about the team and how small they are and how that's an advantage, etc. So I'll have that video out later tonight, so please look forward to that. And thank you guys for joining me tonight. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. And if you're not, please do so. I'd, we'd really love to have you. And a big shout out to the members of Napalm. Thank you so much for making all this possible. Couldn't do it without you. And if you're interested in becoming a member, please click the join button down below for more information and a list of perks. And until next time, guys, God bless and happy gaming. Please listen to what I say. I've been making videos all day. It's a video buffet, you can even hit replay, but please just subscribe, I can't even describe, being part of my tribe, I'll even offer you a prize, but just please just subscribe, and hit the bell notification too.